Aren't you happy the New York Mets signed Max Scherzer? What an absolutely brilliant performance in such a pivotal series against the Atlanta Braves for the Mets to get this first victory. We're going to be talking about his dominance. We're going to be talking about Louis Guillaume hitting a bomb. We're going to be talking about Robinson Cano being a Brave. So much to discuss on this edition of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Ficklestein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at Ficklestein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Now, last week, speaking of Just Baseball, I wrote an article about what Max Scherzer's return means to this Mets team, and we saw it in this game. This is as critical of a series as it gets going up against your chief division rival only a game and a half up well you know what Scherzer just ensured by the end of this series even the Mets lose the next two games they will have a lead in this division because if the Braves win the next two they're going to have a 54 and 36 record the Mets will be 54 and 35 so despite everything else that's what the Mets just ensured tonight thanks to Max Scherzer And he went up against Max Freed, and we'll talk about how the Mets offense fared against him in a minute. But to stay on Scherzer here, he goes seven innings, allows three hits. Two of them in that last inning that he pitched where he was a little bit gassed at the end. Hangs one to Austin Riley, gives up a home run. Then you have Marcelo Zuna gets a double off him. But even at the end, he gets his ninth strikeout to strand that runner at second base. Huge fist pump when he gets off the mound. He has a 2.15 ER right as a Met. And if you look back at Mets history right now, that is the second best ERA of any pitcher in their first 10 starts with the Mets. Al Leiter had a 1.74 ERA. Scherzer, 2.15. It was the guts that he showed to go out there. And just from, from jump, it, it was one of those starts, and we've seen him over the years because, trust me, Scherzer did this exact same thing to the Mets too many times to count where – you just see him throw that first slider and it just gets right over and he dots the outside corner with it. And you just think, all right, he's on, he's on. And, and when he's like that, when he has every single pitch at his disposal, when he is just attack, 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 and he's painting the corners and, and he ha- has an idea out there and the batters are guessing and he's racking up the strikeouts. The guy is an absolute horse. And the thing is, Obviously, when you get Jacob DeGrom back, that's the difference that this team has over any team in baseball is that one-two punch. But the incredible luxury that Steve Cohen bought himself by giving you know Max Scherzer $130 million over three years was that they don't need Jacob DeGrom to win this division. Now, it's going to be great when they get him back, and I'm not saying he's not coming back. He should be back you know, probably on the other side of the break. But Scherzer is this guy right now where – yeah, you feel great about the fact that you still have 10 more starts from him to close out this season and win this division. And you imagine a couple more against this Braves team where they're going to really need Max Scherzer. So to see him go out there and just battle tonight, that was really impressive. But you also have to give the Mets credit around him. You know, after a series where they weren't playing good baseball at all against the the Marlins, the last three games in particular, obviously the one game won in blowout fashion, but You know, the offense went dead. They were kicking the ball around a little bit on defense, making some bad plays. Uh, It it just wasn't good baseball. You go into this series, you're down Starling Marte, at least for now. He's day-to-day at the time. Um, Jeff McNeil on paternity. You know, Travis Jankowski was your best offensive option tonight as he returned from the IL because if it wasn't him, it'd be Ender Inciarte. That's just showing the state of the Mets offensively. And you find a way through it, and obviously – you know, it wasn't a great game offensively. There were two for 10 with runners in scoring position. That's not what you want to see. But you look at what Max Fried did, five innings pitch. Yeah, you would have loved to see them get more runs against him, but he's a really good pitcher. What they did do, though, is they drew five walks, and they knocked him out of the game in the fifth inning. And so from there, the Mets were able to eventually get to the bullpen. That's why you're facing a Darren O'Day in the eighth, 
And speaking of Darren O'Day in the eight, my man, Louis Guillaume hit a tank tonight. One of the things that I was actually just telling this Aram when I was at the game the other night, I was saying, you know, there's no better feeling that I have when I'm playing MLB the show and I square one up with Louis Guillaume and hit a home run. And I trust me, my little franchise I got, maybe we're going to go on Twitch soon. We'll see what happens. That's that's a, a, a topic for another day. But when I hit a home run with Louis Guillaume, nothing feels better because you got to square it up perfectly to get it out. And that's exactly what Guillaume did against Darren O'Day. Four career home runs for Guillaume, two against one pitcher, two against O'Day. Exit velocity there was a perfect 100 miles per hour, nice and round. Hit that ball 379 feet with a launch angle of 36 degrees. He pimped it too, folks. Slight little bat flip, slight, very um, on par with Guillaume as a player and a character. Not going to do some crazy pimp job, but let you know that he knows he got that one. And to see Max Scherzer and Francisco Lindor reacting in the dugout, how fired up Scherzer was, how happy Lindor was to see the Mets get him that run. That was big. Um, Earlier in the game, the Mets got a couple of runs when Brandon Nimmo had a leadoff double. Pete Alonso drove him in with the double. The Mets then got the bases loaded as Canna drew a walk and Eduardo Escobar got a little bit of a blue pit there. Um, and then Guillaume had an RBI earlier in the game on what probably could have, maybe should have been a inning inning double play. He just barely beat it, depending on your angle. Maybe he should have been out. The call stood. It didn't get confirmed for whatever that's worth. But the Mets needed every run they got. Um, in the ninth inning, they got a little more insurance. Nimmo drew a walk. Lindor got a base hit. Pete Alonzo, they played the infield back, which was an interesting move. Um, I think the thought is, if you play the infield in against Pete Alonzo, and I was surprised that Keith or Gary didn't say this, to me it's like maybe we just don't trust our fielders to even feel the ground ball off Pete Alonzo's bat if we play them in. And so do you play your infield in, and he ends up hitting one to third base that maybe if they're playing in, you know, Riley's not able to get to it, right? So, so I don't know if that was the strategy or if they simply were doing the, the what, did, what did Gary say, the 12th dimensional chess move of wanting to ensure that Edwin Diaz pitched in this game. Maybe that was it as well. But regardless, that ground out gave them a lead and Edwin Diaz came on in the ninth. And I mean, he was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. If you go through his career numbers, pitching without rest has not been a strong suit. Even this year, you look at the numbers, 3-6-0 ERA prior to tonight pitching on no day's rest. 3-3-8 ERA pitching on one day's rest has not given up a run when he gets two days of rest or more. So usually in the past, when Diaz is a little bit rested, generally he's very, very good. But, I mean, this year, the way he's pitching, I don't blame Buck at all going to in that spot, ensuring you get this game. As I said at the top, this ensures the Mets will have a division lead by the end of this series. That's critical. But – I also could have seen the other side of the argument, right? If the Mets went to Seth Lugo tonight, I know fans would have jumped off a cliff. I get it. Personally, I would have been okay with it because Seth Lugo has not given up three runs in any inning this year. He's been good more than he has in 25 scoreless appearances out of 32 chances. Um, you know, he has was it 12 holds, three saves, three blown saves. So if you're talking about kind of high lever situations, 15 out of 18 times he's come through. It's not that bad, but I get going to Diaz. And look, Diaz went out and struck out the side. So absolutely incredible execution by him. You burned him, though, for tomorrow. So the Mets are going to have to figure out a way to get through the remainder of this series, potential without their closer. I would imagine that he'll probably be available for that final game after he gets the day off tomorrow. Um, but Lugo will be the guy tomorrow, so we'll see what happens there. My whole point, because I did kind of tweet something out where I said I wouldn't have minded Seth Lugo going out there. My whole thought process was, let's just say tomorrow the Mets are winning 2-1 with a chance to win this series. You might be regretting it a little bit. But then again, if Lugo goes out there and gives up a couple of hits and then you go to Diaz and the Diaz blows, and then you might have been in the exact same spot and you could have burned him anyway. So lo love the whole game. I I what am I going to quibble about, really? The Mets get the job done here. And, and a huge, 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 huge performance, though, by Max Scherzer. Again, He's the guy that you really have to focus in on. And I want to talk about him a little bit more in the next segment here because I, I look at Max Scherzer. I look at this brace, Tim. You look at the two lineups. We're going to go through it. The one differentiating factor the Mets have this year is they have Max Scherzer. That's the biggest difference for me. That's why I still believe they should be favorited to win this division, and that's why they won tonight. But before we get to that, 
From the people who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift to your taste buds. You've probably tried the amazing coconut brownie chunk built bar, but guess what? Your friends at Built have now given you the coconut brownie chunk puffs, which is the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They've made them in so many delicious flavors like the churro is my favorite, but now you can have it in the coconut brownie chunk. All built bars and puffs come covered in 100% real chocolate, and the puffs are fluffy with a cloud of that coconut brownie goodness. Stop drooling and listen because they are also good for you as well. They're low in calories, low in sugar, high in protein, and they're all delicious. If you want to try built bars today, go to builtbar.com. These protein bars are made with a collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently, which provide tons of health benefits. You can eat something good that is good for you. The best part about Built is that they taste amazing and they're healthy for you. So when you're at Built.com, use the promo code LOCK15. You're going to get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. So I'm not quite done marveling at Max Scherzer's performance in this game and just what he's done this season. Uh, a 2 one ERA through 10 starts. He's 6-1, and one, uh, 79 strikeouts and 62 and two-thirds. It's incredible to watch this guy work, and you still are dreaming of the DeGrom-Scherzer duo atop this rotation and what that means for the Mets. To have him pitching in games like this when you're trying to win a series um, against your division rival, it's critical. It's critical to have a real stopper out there, and as great as the Mets pitching fair without him, there's a different edge when you have Scherzer on the mound. There's a different pep in your step as a team when you get to go and play behind a Max Scherzer and know, all right, if we get three or four across, we got a good chance to win this game. That's exactly what the Mets got in the game tonight. So to see him go out again and dominate the two starts coming off rehab, he strikes out 11 against the Reds, gives up just two hits with six, with six across six innings pitch. Um, and then this one goes seven, three hits, the one earned run allowed. 20 strikeouts and 13 innings coming off the IL without a single walk. <laughs> it's insane, man. I mean, you look at the strikeouts to the walk for this season. Uh, as I've said there, 79 strikeouts, 11 walks. It's just amazing stuff to have him out there. And uh, you think about the next three years with Max Scherzer, is there any sign he's going to slow down? Seriously. I mean, the way this guy is aging the way this guy has continued to be, you know, every single year, year in, year out, a top three pitcher in baseball. It's just amazing. And I think you're seeing him right now get right back into that midseason form. You want to knock on wood, but you feel really good about your chances of getting, you know, 10, 11 more incredible Max Scherzer starts throughout the remainder of the season. Maybe we do my math wrong on that. They played what? What is it? 87 games now. So you have, is that 75 more? 75 divided by five. Not great at math. That's why I'm a writer. Uh, 75 divided by five is simple math. And yet, don't know, 15. 15 more stars. Maybe call it 14. That's a good opportunity for the Mets to win a lot of games down the stretch here, especially if you get Jacob DeGrom back in that rotation. So, loved what I saw from Scherzer in this game. Loved what I saw from, from the Mets bullpen coming out. And obviously, Adam Adovino walked a little bit of a tightrope, but they get the job done. And now you look at the remainder of this series, it's going to be tough, but at least you're in this position now where you just have to win one of these next two. Spencer Strider, as I mentioned on yesterday's show, he's going to be a handful for the Mets batters on Tuesday. David Peterson, what's he going to do against this lineup? You look at it and you got Acuna. Big right-handed bat. Swanson this year is a big right-handed bat. Austin Riley, a big right-handed bat. Marcelo Zuna, a right-handed bat. You know, they could go and they could get William Contreras and have him in the lineup if they want to. They got Darno. I mean, not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination for David Peterson to face off against that Braves team. I'm not saying he can't go out and have a good start, but imagine how you'd feel if the Mets lost this game. And then it's David Peterson going against Spencer Strider in game two. And then suddenly that final game of the series, you know, it's going to be Chris Bassett versus Charlie Morton. What if that was a game for your life, right? A game to decide the division. And obviously at that point, the Braves would have a division lead had they won the first two games of this series. So what Scherzer did tonight, um, it's just amazing, man. It really is. And again and again and again, I got to say it, it's just, it doesn't feel real that this dude's a Met. 
Like we're still in this point now where he's been a Met for, you know, months now. And we've now seen 10 starts with him in a Mets uniform. So we're in double digits uh, of seeing this guy operate in the blue and orange. And I still don't feel like he's a Met. I, I, I still don't feel like it's real to be watching this guy that tormented the Mets for years. Now he's a Met. And when you think about where this team can go, a large portion of it hinges on what he can do for this team. And it's just, it changed everything. That's also why Steve Cohen's such an incredible owner because he says, you know what? What's it going to take? $43 plus million a year? Done. Over a million dollars to start? Fine. You know? Break down the hundreds of thousands of dollars he's probably making per pitch. It's all worth it in this business because right now, as we head towards the All-Star break, the Mets are sitting with a 54-33 and record. The early part of the season where the Mets jumped out to that lead on the Braves, that was having Scherzer as the leader of this rotation. And now you're seeing that again um, as we get closer and closer to the second half. And I think as we talk about you know, still playing the Braves now, what is it, 14 more times in the final 75 games, Scherzer gets the ball a couple more times against the Braves, and he will be worth every single penny of that contract. But in the final segment today, Robinson Cano's a brave. Did any of us see that coming? <laughs> and would he be a better DH option right now than J.D. Davis? I'm not saying the Mets made the wrong call. I'm not. But I do want to combine those two things for a final segment today because I'm about as fed up as I can be with seeing J.D. penciled into that DH spot. And to see Cano out there, and of course, he's the guy that breaks up the no-hitter for Scherzer in this game, and he goes two for three. Um, also made kind of a ridiculous play at second base. So everything happened as you would have expected when the news was announced that Cano was a Met, but I want to go into that a little bit more in just a minute. First, though, this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and miles, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts star to stock all the parts you need. So why endure the pointless and intimidating question where the guy behind the counter is just looking up parts on their computer, only offering the one brand their warehouse happens to carry when instead – you can go to rockauto.com yourself, shop from hundreds of manufacturers, save maybe 30%, 50%, potentially even 100% more for the exact same amount of parts that you would get at that chain store or a new car dealership. Rock Auto is a family business that's been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are reliably low for every customer. So go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now, see all the parts available for your car or truck, and make sure you're right locked on in there. How'd you hear about us, Box? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. So today, Robinson Cano was playing second base for the Atlanta Braves, very clearly using the glove he bought for the Mets with his number 24 that he wore as a Met instead of the number 22 on his back with the blue and orange coloring. And the Mets were paying him way more money than the Braves were to start in this game and get two hits against the Mets. It's one of those moments as a fan that can just be very frustrating. And you wonder how it happened. And basically, here's the deal. The Braves needed a bat, a left-handed one preferably, to play some second base. They saw in San Diego, minor leagues for the Chihuahuas, I believe, in El Paso. Cano was hitting 333, crossed 21 games, played 104 plate appearances. Um, or at bats, excuse me. No, no, that was right, plate appearances. 96 at bats. Um, 375 on base, 479 slugging, had three home runs, five doubles. They said, why not? We'll throw you a dollar, bring them over, give you some cash. doesn't really matter. It's basically just, hey, we got a major league job for uh, a, a longtime major leaguer. They send him over. He starts against the Mets. And as I've already said multiple times, has a multi-hit game because, of course, he does. Now, does this mean the Mets made a mistake cutting Robinson Cano? No. They made a mistake when they signed Cano in the first place and then bottles all together the same offseason where the Mets tried to solve a problem they didn't need to solve, where they went out to get a second baseman, even though Jeff McNeil in 2018 proved he could and should be the starting second baseman of the future. So they trade for Cano and they get Edwin Diaz in the deal. That's great. I know that people are saying the Mets won the Edwin Diaz trade. Here's why they didn't, because they got Cano back. If they just traded Jared Kelenic, Justin and Justin Dunn for Edwin Diaz alone, it's a better trade because you know what you don't have? You don't have 20 plus million dollars in the books this year, and you could have gone out and gotten Kyle Schwarber this offseason. You want to know what Kyle Schwarber has been doing for another division rival this year? 
Well, <laughs> you look at what he's done this season and how many home runs do you think he's hit? 28. 28 home runs. How do you think that would look backing up Pete Alonso in the Mets lineup? Pretty damn good. Instead, the Mets still have another move the Mets made in that 2019 offseason. J.D. Davis, a trade that the Astros, a very smart organization, were willing to just give up on, on a former top prospect, hand him to the Mets. And here J.D. is. And you look at what he's done this season. 241 average, 330 on base, 685 OPS, three home runs. Last one being a grand slam, which was great for his numbers, adding four RBIs to the total for 19 on the season. But it was a hanging breaking ball. 82 miles an hour, right in his wheelhouse. He should have put that one in the seats, and I would have been furious if he didn't. So, look, you see where you're at this season with this guy, and you keep banging your head against the wall, throwing him out there, and I don't get it. Like, at least, if anything, you talk about what the Mets had tonight. They were in this position by starting J.D. against the lefty, where if they needed a backup third baseman, shortstop, or second baseman for any reason, J.D. would have had to come out of the D.H. spot. The Mets would have lost the D.H., and it would have had to play him in the field because then you could have moved a Giorme or a Lindor or however you had to, to, to move that infield around, depending on who got hurt, right? So so that's what would have happened had the Mets been in a position where one of those guys ends up banged up in this game. Instead, why don't you just start Don Smith at first base and not have that headache? Let Pete Alonzo, DH, okay? J.D. Davis can be on the bench. And, and also you can have the guy that for his career has handled left-handed pitching better and Dom Smith out there. I said it a million times. I don't get why the Mets run a reverse split as a platoon. Like JD's better against righties instead of lefties. Let's hit him against every single lefty. Dom is better against lefties and righties in his career. Eh, let's hit him against every righty and not let him face a lefty. It doesn't make any sense. And if you want to talk about what's best for this team right now, when you are without a Starling Marte, at least day to day, when you're out without Jeff McNeil for this series, obviously you want Guillaume in there playing second base. You look at what else you're trying to do. I would say, hey, maybe you just go all defense, put Dom at first, have Pete DH. Maybe you just let Dom DH if you want Pete to play a day at first. It doesn't matter to me, but at least Dom swinging a good bat since he came off the, the you know, when it came off the IL. And since he came back from being demoted, he's been much better. And I really think JD stands for just DFA. Or maybe it's JO just option because he still has those. But when you get to a point here where you have Ender and Ciarte and Travis Jankowski in the same lineup, or not in the same lineup, on the same active roster, it just makes no sense. They should have brought up Mark Vientos by now. If not him, Daniel Polka. If not Polka, Travis Blankenhorn. If not Blankenhorn, Guse Cato, who just won the player of the week or something like that in AAA, get some juice in that lineup. To have Ender and Ciarte and Travis Jankowski on the same roster makes zero sense. Two guys who are essentially glove only guys at this point. You know, they bring you defense and speed, same type of player. Doesn't function on this roster. For the time being, yeah, keep JD around. But once your guys get healthy, once you get McNeil and Marte back, to me, it's all right, cool. Got those guys back. Do something uh, uh, to get, um, you know, Mark Vientos up. If that means option JD, fine. And, and probably, like I said, pick one, Jay Kasker and Ciarte. But I can't believe we're still at this point where the Mets are expecting some different result. I feel like he's got a large enough sample size this season. You're at 166 at bats for JD Davis and the production hasn't been there. You look at last year and sure the surface num numbers look good. He hit 285, 384 on base, 436 slugging, but he had five home runs and 179 at bats year before in 2020, 190 at bats, six home runs. Since his 22 home run season in the juice ball year, J.D. Davis has hit 14 home runs. And I'm looking at it now, quick math, just, just basically, yeah, over 500 at bats. So it is what it is. And there's a guy that at least gives you some home run pop, if anything, in Mark Vientos. I don't get why they haven't tried it yet, but we will see if maybe um, the Mets go to that well at some point before the deadline, considering they haven't yet. I can't expect it. Um, they're going to ride out this series as is. Hopefully you get Marte back before the end of the series. And McNeil should meet the team in Chicago for the final series of the season. But the offense needs a jolt to it. And they got enough tonight. But if you want to take one more from this Braves team, they're going to need some other guys to step up here. Um, we'll see if they can get it done. But that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked on Mets. 
As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, tune in to Locked On MLB Prospects. We got the MLB draft coming up, and Lindsey Crosby is your prospect encyclopedia. So make sure you tune in to learn about all the stars of tomorrow by following Locked On MLB Prospects wherever you get podcasts.